I've titled this reintroduction to trigonometry because it is the start of the topic, but we've met trigonometry before, right? Um, tell me some things you know about trigonometry. Just throw out some words or some ideas. What can you tell me? Because you've been doing this for like a couple of years now. Yeah. Fantastic. Triangles, I'm so glad you went there first because it's in the name, right? In fact, trigon, trigon. Uh, that's, that just means triangle, right? Except that gone is just the Greek word for angle. So we're interested in three angled shapes. What does metry mean? Like when you see like geometry or telemetry or what, what's, what's that generally referring to? I'll give you a clue. I'm really obsessed with words as you might be able to tell just by what I've done the last two minutes. We actually have a, a word that we usually associate with this. Like say when you talk about centimeters, meters, kilometers, etc. This is the metric system, right? So what does that mean? Metric versus metric. What's the idea? Yeah, go ahead. Measurement? It's about measurement, yeah? So this really, this whole topic, it's just a fancy name for a measuring triangles. What kinds of things do we measure in triangles? We've already talked about one of them. Angles. Angles, thank you, right? Um, we're interested in how big angles are, but these are not the only things. What are the other things we're interested in? Yeah. Sides. Sides. Sides, angles, that's kind of it, right? So I'm also going to put in these are, you know, by virtue of being three angled, they're also three sided, okay? Now, um, you can put your pens out of your hand because what I want to do with you first, before we start to dig back into the content of this is, I want to do a little activity. I get, just got very lucky that this happened to be the lesson for Mrs. Bray that I get to cover for you guys. I want to give you an illustration of why we should care about this, right? Because I assume there will be some of you who maybe be like, oh yeah, I might do something like this in the future if I'm an engineer or an architect. But I'm also going to assume that will not be most of you. It might be none of you actually because they're just a very small proportion of society. So I want to give you instead something we all care about that is why trigonometry is relevant to us which you've actually been doing for, how old are you guys now? Like 16 now? 16, yeah? That you've been doing for the last 16 years, you just didn't know it, okay? Here's what I'd like you to do, a little experiment. I ask you to put your pens out of your hands because I'd like you to hold up an index finger for me, and I'd like you to hold it up in front of your face so that um, you can actually see me behind your finger. So you're all kind of gonna be facing this way, okay? All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, what I'd like you to do is focus on your finger, focus closely on it, and now what I want you to do is keep your finger where it is, but I want you to notice that behind your finger, I'm all blurry. Do you see that? Like I'm all out of focus, yeah? If, you, if any of you are interested in photography, um, it's a depth of field issue, right? So I'm blurry, your finger is sharp. Okay, keep your finger where it is. I'd like you now, with your finger there, now can you focus on me? So here I am, your finger's still there in view, but you know, do you notice something weird has happened to your finger? Don't focus on it because it'll ruin the effect. Do you notice if you're looking at me and I'm sharp here, you're now seeing two copies of your finger. Did you notice that? Yeah. And they're both blurry. That's a bit weird, right? I don't know if you ever noticed that. Okay, focus back on your finger. And you're like, oh, it's okay. It's back to being one. It's just something weird my eyes are doing. Okay, and we want to tease out what you're doing now, right? Come back to me. Keep your finger there. I can fix that double vision problem that you've got, right? You've got two copies of your finger there. I want you to close one of your eyes. You're still focused on me, yeah? Your finger's blurry, but you can see me sharply behind it. So now you've just got one blurry finger, which is a relief because you are indeed only holding one finger. But now just um, while you're still focusing on me, so your finger's still blurry, I want you to swap eyes. And then swap back. Do you notice your finger doing something weird? As you swap back and forth, keep going back and forth between your eyes. Okay, you can stop now because it's hilarious. You look at them very amusing. Okay, <laughs> what was your finger doing? How would you describe it? Teleporting. It was like going, it was like here, and then it just, you switched eyes, and suddenly it was in another spot, right? Now, what you're experiencing now is what we call stereoscopic vision, right? You got two eyes. I had to check as everyone walked in, because sometimes, um, I don't know if any of you guys have heard of a guy named Adam Spencer. Adam Spencer, he's like this maths geek. Um, he's only got one eye. Well, his other eye is glass, so he doesn't see with it, right? Um, so you got two eyes, stereoscopic, or sometimes you call it binocular, binocular vision, right? I want you to think about this, right? Why was it, and you can reason this through with me, why was it that as you switched eyes back and forth, your finger was appearing to move around? Why was that happening? Have a think about it. I'm sure you guys can work it out. I've done this with little kids and they, they work it out. What's your theory? Because you're looking at it from different angles and like you see more, you've got like on this side, you have more space here, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's more close to this side. Yeah, yeah, very good. This side. If you, if you were holding up your finger like I was, I was holding my finger up sort of um, 
so my fingernail was facing to one side. Um, as you switch eyes, right, if you're using, say, in my case, my left eye, my left eye can't see my fingernail at all because it's on the wrong side, right? And then from the other side, all I can see is fingernail because that's the perspective issue, right? Now, here's the cool thing, right? Every second of every day as you look out the world around you, right, um, you're seeing two copies of the world all the time. You're just, your brain is just really clever at stitching them together and working out, I can try and make them cohere. But when you put something very close to your face, your two eyes see something that is very different to each other, right? Because the difference between them, I mean, what is it, like 10 centimeters, something like that? That distance is exacerbated when you've got things close up to you, right? Now, underneath where you've drawn your heading, right? I just want you to make a very, very small diagram for me, okay? Um, I want you to put in for me uh, two eyes looking up at the world, okay? Now, this is actually genius. Um, I'm particularly conscious of this because my wife and my daughter both have this condition where they can't do what I'm about to describe, and so I'm very conscious of it. And we don't really think about it because it just happens automatically in the background. If you've got your two eyes, right, and they're looking at some object, let's just put like an X out here in the front, right? They're looking at some object. What is the way that our brain can tell whether something is large and far away or small and close up, right? Because, you know, if you like blew up a poster of somebody and put it really far away, presumably it looked roughly the same. But your brain can tell that it's actually massive and off in the distance. Here's how it does it, right? As your eyes look towards this one object, right? Your brain is secretly measuring this angle in here constantly, which it can do because it has these two different points. Right? So if, for example, you went around the world and you just have one eye open, okay? have you done this experiment before? Like you try to catch a ball when you've only got one eye open? It's almost impossible because this depth perception thing can't happen. It can't work out. Right? So your brain is doing what we call triangulation. Why do you think it's called triangulation? It's in there. You're forming a triangle, right? One point, your two eyes, and you've got this triangle, you've got this angle, and therefore your body, rather your brain, works out, it infers these two distances. It does a calculation in the background without you thinking about it, okay? In other words, why does trigonometry matter? Why do we care about it, right? It's the relationship between sides and angles that, yeah, like it also lets us measure the world and build stuff, but actually it's just something that your brain has evolved to do to understand the world around you, okay? There are three, and I'll give you a clue, there are three particular ideas or concepts within trigonometry that you spent all your time in years nine and 10 working on. Can you help me remember what they are? All together. Yeah, say it louder. Sine, Sin, cos, and tan, very good. Um, do you guys know what their abbreviations of? Because all three are abbreviations. What's, ah, okay, so you've actually answered another thing for me, which is fine, I'll jot that down. So this is an acronym that helps me know what they mean. But does anyone know what the words mean? The actual words? Sine, Yeah, very good. So sine, <laughs> sine is short for sine. And you should jot this down, by the way. You can pick your pens back up. Cos is short for cosine. So clearly there's some kind of connection between these two. And then tan does stand for tangent, which seems like a weird one off on the side. Not a rhetorical question, but if the answer is no, that will tell me where I'm going to go in this double. Does anyone know why tangent is called tangent? It's the weird, like, one on the side. Has anyone been taught it before? If not, that's okay. I will teach you later on, but I just want to see. I don't want to tell you something you don't already know. All right, that's all right. Uh, let's then unpack. You, you told me this acronym here that relates to sine, cosine, tangent. Uh, let's do this first bit. The SOH, what does that stand for? Opposite. Opposite over hypotenuse. So if we had some, say, angle theta, right, we would say that sine theta is equal to the opposite on the hypotenuse, right? We've sort of used this to help us remember. Uh, what about the CAH in the middle? What's that going to mean? Cos theta equals what? Adjacent. Adjacent on hypotenuse, fantastic. And then lastly, we've got uh, tan, bringing up the rear. So I, if, I, if I have tan theta, um, we've got, again, each time we're getting this ratio between two sides and it's going to be? Opposite over, opposite over adjacent. Fantastic. So underneath this acronym, it kind of implies a diagram, doesn't it? A triangle, that's what's trigonometry, and we should draw this all together. A triangle, which is, uh, I've got some angle theta, like say here, 
And importantly, this is not just any triangle, right? These particular, we call them the trigonometric ratios, we've only been used to working with them in particular kinds of triangles. And I've tried badly, I didn't use a ruler. But what kind of triangles are we interested in mostly? Right angle, very good. So let's go ahead and chuck a right angle here. So the whole idea of opposite hypotenuse adjacent is its positional language. It tells you where the sides are, it labels the sides relative to their position when you think about theta. Okay? So if we were to name these, let's call this say A, I'll make this one B, and then C. Okay? Can you name for me the side that's opposite? BC. BC, fantastic. So we'll put opposite over here. Which side is the adjacent side? AC, AC. wonderful. And then of course we have left the side opposite the right angle, the longest side in every right angle triangle. You've got the hypotenuse over here. 